Hi, hi, hi. My name is Takenya and I am a YouTuber slash podcaster slash lover of all things black. And today I am coming to you in a different setting, a very intimate setting. And I did this on purpose because I am introducing a series on my channel. And it is something I'm very, very nervous about and I'm very, very, was very reluctant to do. But I'm realizing that because it keeps popping up in my spirit and my just everyday life and it's something that I have been pondering on, I have to just give it to, to the world. And so this series is called the Unspeakable Series. And the Unspeakable Series is a what I want to call a safe space um, for normalizing conversation that we like to call or would like to consider unspeakable. Growing up, in a society, especially in the black community, where we shame things like we shame people for being broke, we shame people for being ugly, we shame people for having low self esteem, we shame people for having high self esteem, and we don't like it's it's kind of like I want to call it the unspeakable series therapy because I wanted to create an environment where I'm I'm normalizing the idea that it is okay to talk about uncomfortable things, and so. I'm going to bring you to what brought me to the series before I talk about what I'm going to talk about today and the first install of the Unspeakable series. So, my whole life, I wouldn't say has been uncomfortable, but like, if I had to think of a theme about my life, I've always been uncomfortable and I've always tried to find comfort. And what I'm learning is that I have to just find comfort in being uncomfortable and that's how Unspeakable series was birthed. Like, if it wasn't as a child li living in two different homes and um, just being uncomfortable with saying one thing to this person and this person, it, it was just a lot. You know, being raised around um, one parent who was um, emotionally abusive and another parent who you know it, it, a lot and living in two households two different households two different mindsets I was always in an uncomfortable state um, growing up now that I'm overweight and I became morbidly obese I'm always uncomfortable it's always an ache it's always a pain it's always something and so I had to learn, like, you are always uncomfortable. But then I'm not the kind of person that's going to talk about me being uncomfortable. I'm very, very vocal about those things. So I decided to come up with the Unspeakable series. And today, my first topic will be what I like to call the performative ally. And if you don't know what an ally is, it's a person that supports marginalized communities being as though they're privileged. So... I'm an ally to um, marginalized communities outside of the fact that I am in a marginalized, two of them, myself. I'm a woman and I'm black. Um, but I am not of the LGBT spectrum that I know of just yet. I wouldn't know because I've never been in a relationship. But I don't find myself sexually attracted to women. I'm attracted to men um, masculinity so I am attracted I think tr the trans men that I have seen on my timeline I think that they're attractive so I'm attracted to men um and masculinity and nothing exclusive to men I don't I think that women are gorgeous and I do like to look at women but I've never been sexually attracted in a way where I've wanted to be in a monogamous or polyamorous relationship I wouldn't know those things so I would consider myself an ally until learned otherwise based on experiences and um I've always been an ally but I've never put a word on it I wouldn't even say that I'm an ally I'm just a I try to be a decent human being and um my best friend who I live with happens to be of the LGBT community um a lot of my male friends are um in the LGBT community female friends that I have that are in, uh, in the LGBT community along with family colleagues co oh just if you live in America or anywhere you're gonna know somebody that's on the LGBT spectrum and what happened most recently, which is what I was uncomfortable about talking about, but I was like, this is the perfect thing to bring to the Unspeakable series, is the fact that I was at work. And I was having a conversation about um, privilege and being... Uh, I was talking to a friend, or I call him my bro, and he has a YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description box below. And we were talking about privilege in terms of the black man and how the black man 
really doesn't want equality. They want the same privilege as the white man. And I was telling him um, the effects of that type of rhetoric because it leaves behind so many other people. Um, Black Lives Matter to them is not Black Lives Matter all black lives, trans, gay, bisexual, none, it's just black lives matter when you hear that. You think of straight black men or straight black women. And I was telling him that's detrimental. And then we got to, on the topic of discussing um, how we would want to raise our kids. So I was telling him I really like Michael Eric Dots, Johnson. Oh, sorry. He's from here too. Sorry. I like Michael Eric Dyson because if you watch his recent Breakfast Club interview, you learned that he was an intersectional activist. And I didn't know that about him. I thought he was just like, you know, Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed and all of those black men who are, you know, they 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 claim they're for the culture, for the black movement, but it's only with straight black men. They think that, you know, femini the feminize feminization of black men is plaguing the black community. Like, they think of, they believe in those ridiculous things that I personally think are myths. And Michael Eric Dyson basically alluded to the fact that he was not. And he, my co-worker was saying, well, I do believe in the feminization of black men. And I do believe that, you know, the TV, like, and it's, I personally think that that type of rhetoric is dangerous because it is not true. And you're also dehumanizing a group of feminine men who choose to express themselves in that way because when you do your research you learn that gender is not exclusive to masculinity or femininity like there's a spectrum and because we weren't taught those things it's perpetuated in a society which contributes to crim contributes to the dangers around these people's lives black men black gay men are in danger when they go out into society because Black men feel like there's a threat to masculinity if you find yourself attracted to a feminine black, uh, feminine black gay man, and they like people really die at the hands of toxic masculinity. And when we were having the conversation, my friend, my best friend, just kind of shut down in the conversation, and I'm looking at him like, you know, get with this nigga with me, like you know, I'm being an ally, but you need to, you know. And I didn't think in that moment how emotionally how much emotional labor you have to do to have a conversation about your livelihood because uh, essentially talking to your oppressor is literally begging for humanity do you understand me i'm not going to beg from humanity from a white person i don't have the energy to talk to a racist white person about my blackness and why my blackness is human so I relate to my best friend and saying my gayness is my everyday life. It is not a caricature and I don't have time to debate it. So when I was looking at him like, why the fuck are you not having this conversation? I was just like, whatever, I'll just keep going. And we breeze on through the conversation. And I'm sure there were points that I probably missed um, that probably wouldn't have went missed if my best friend would have said something. So when the conversation was over and my best friend, he left during me a conversation went to the bathroom came back he came back drained and i'm like i well we're, we're like we're really close so we're like connected in a way where it's like i feel his energy and i'm thinking he was about to come back and applaud me like i'm so glad you spoke up for me friend da, 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 da. i'm so glad you da, da, da. but he was like complete opposite and i kind of felt a way like how dare you not congratulate me on helping you um and then I have to check myself and it made me uncomfortable because it's like I, I'm the person that gets on Twitter and I try to be an ally and I repost and I retweet and I talk about these things and I support and I do this and this, this, this and that. And then right when it was time for me to be an ally and not expect anything in return, when I didn't get the praise that I assumed as a privileged cis heterosexual woman should for stepping out of my privilege and helping, I was like, how dare you? You know, like, how dare you not say thank you, you know? And that's problematic. And that's something that I find, um, it was it was almost, I didn't want to talk about it because I never want to be so privileged where I expect praise for doing the bare minimum, for being a huge, decent human being. So when I see on Twitter where there's these straight women that are like, 
I love straight men who support gay men and are not a certain way around gay men. It's like, are we really applauding the bare minimum? Like, okay, bare minimum Twitter, as if you just couldn't strike again. Here you go. So, I just wanted to express something that I probably wouldn't have done had I not had this series and invite conversation about it. And it gives me chills. And it is very, it's a step that I'm taking that is very, very vulnerable. And it's it's not easy because I am speaking on things that make me uncomfortable. And so I'm hoping that with this series, the more I come up with top topics, it grows into a space where people may be right in and we can talk about unspeakable things that you don't necessarily want to put your name to, but I'll speak it for you. So we can normalize conversation about unspeakable things that make us uncomfortable. And it makes me uncomfortable to say that I was in a position where I used my privilege, privilege and thought that I should have been praised for it. So, with all of that being said... I'm pretty sure that this will be the space for unspeakable series until I learn, you know, more about lighting. I'm using my camera phone. I have to do what I got to do to get where I want to be. So you got to start from somewhere. I'm using my camera phone in the closet in the corner. And I'm sure we'll grow from there. I hope so. But this is my first installment on my unspeakable series. And I hope to see you even more. Much love.